The statements, views, and claims expressed are all attributed to the speaker and do not necessarily reflect those of the management, workforce, and academic community of PNU. Welcome to PNU Talks, Teaching and Advocacy for Lifetime Knowledge and Skills, Version 2, Sustainable Development Goals, SDG Series. For our second talk, our speaker is a university professor of the Philippine Normal University from 2016 to present. She is happily married with three wonderful children. Way back before, she was a classroom teacher at Pedro E. Diaz High School Alabang Deped Muntin Lupa from 1994 to 2012 and has become an education supervisor at the same division from 2013 to 2015. She also became a consultant of Philippine Business for Education's 1000 Teacher Program, an AUSAID funded program. She is a graduate of secondary education major in social science in 1994 with an academic award cum laude in Philippine Normal University. Studied Master in Arts and Values Education at the University of Arts and the Pacific in 2012 and also obtained a certificate in Values Education Civic Education from the same school in the year 2008. She finished her PhD in Education major in Educational Leadership and Management at the La Salle University Manila in 2017. She was a Muntin Lupa Outstanding Teacher in 1997 and 2004. She received a Metro Bank Foundation Outstanding Teacher of the Philippines 2008, the ng Barangay Selerangan ng Edukasyon Award in 2009, Outstanding Citizen of Muntin Lupa 2014, PNU Gawad Chilo Awardee for Eminent Alumni 2017, PNU Alumni Association Chapter Outstanding Alumni Awardee 2018, and Outstanding UNESCO Clubs in the Philippines 2019. She is a fellow of the program Fulbright Distinguished Awards for the International Teachers and International Leaders in Education Program of the U.S. Department of State in 2010 and UNESCO APCEIU Capacity Building for the Global Citizenship Education in 2019. She authored books and school enhancement materials for Arling Pandipunan and press the lead cyberbullying in 2017, understanding the self and everyday ethics in 2021. Her current research topics are values education, global citizenship, transversal skills, communication leadership and extension, and transformative education. She also became a speaker and facilitator of various topics such as GCED and ESD, character education, pedagogical content and knowledge, and teacher leadership. She will talk about the topic entitled Together as Partners. Let's listen to our esteemed research speaker, Dr. Rubena R. Hebanada. Magandang hapon po sa lahat. Magandang araw sa ating mga viewers online. Ngayong hapon, isa na namang episode ng PNU Talks version 2 ang ating pag-aaralan. Sa SDG series na ito, pagtutuan na natin ng pansin ang SDG 17, Partnership for the Goals. Ako si Awi Hibanada, isa ako sa mga dalugguro dito sa ating inang pamantasan at kamag-aral ninyo sa isang napakalaking classroom na tinatawag nating buhay dito sa mundo. Samahan ninyo ako ngayong hapon sa pagtalakay sa ating paksang Together as Partners. Paalala sa ating mga online viewers, 
Huwag pong kalimutan na mag-like and share sa ating PNU Facebook page. Maari ding isulat ang inyong mga komento at kuro-kuro. Sa ngayong araw na ito, naisip niyo ba kung ano nang mangyayari sa 2030? Seven years from now. Ano na kaya ako? Ikaw, ano, ano ka na kaya? Malamang graduate ka na, no? Umalis ka na dito sa inang pamantasan. Or maaring may sarili ka ng pamilya. Dahil sa masyado akong curious, no? Ngayong araw na to, ito ako. Ilang araw lang bago ang talk na ito, kumuha ako ng selfie. At sa tulong ng aking cellphone, tinignan ko kung ano na ba yung itsura ko sa 2030. At ito yung nakita ko. So, I'll be seven years older by 2030. So, siguro marami na rin akong mga gray hair. No? Andiyan na yung aking silver lining. But apart from that, iniisip natin, ano kayang klaseng mundo ang gusto nating makita sa 2030? And this posed a question to all of us. What kind of world would you like to see in 2030? Sabi nila, pag gusto mo raw magbago ng isang bagay o may gusto kang baguhin sa iyong paligid, kailangan ay uh, gawin mong better place, no? Yung iyong kinalalagyan. Kailangan ikaw isang activist. Sino sa inyo yung masasabi nyo na activist ka? Ako ay isang activist. I see a few hands. Yeah, no? Or expert. Anyone? Masasabi expert no? sa isang bagay. No? At um, naniniwala ang iba na kailangan, o marami, mga kabataan, no? pinaniniwalaan nila, kailangan maging expert muna ako bago ako magbago ng kung ano man yung gusto kong baguhin. No? Pero ito yung good news. Sabihin natin, good news. Yan, sabi no, ito yung good news kasi lahat tayo ay may pagkakataon na magbago o baguhin kung anuman ang nakikita nating hindi maganda. Lahat tayo ay magtutulong-tulong kung anuman ang pwede nating magawa para magkaroon tayo ng isang magandang kinabukasan. Yan. So ito yung pag-uusapan natin ngayon, ano? The SDGs. There are 17 goals. At lahat tayo actually ay naapektuhan at pwedeng makatulong sa pagkakamit nito sa 2030. Bakit ko nasabi yun? Yan, ito yung mga SDGs at kailangan sa 2030. Ito rin ay tinatawag na global goals. Bakit ko nasabi yun, guys? Bakit ko nasabi yun, mga kapatid? Dahil... Lahat halos ng aspeto ng buhay natin, kakikitaan ng SDG. No? I have here a daily newspaper. Nagbabasa pa ba kayo ng daily newspaper? Or online na kayo, no? At dito sa newspaper na to, kahapon ito, kahapon ito daily. At dito sa newspaper na to, ay maraming mga balita. Siyempre, newspaper nga eh, di ba? At sa mga balita dito, katulad nitong isa, nakalagay October 27, Prayer Day for Peace. No? Uh, inilathala at ipinahayag na sa October 27, it will be a Prayer Day for Peace. And peace is SDG 16. No? And then, meron dito na nakalagay, 10 ball champ owes a lot to teammates. Sinabi niya na habang nagpa-practice siya, nakatulong mabuti yung pakikipagkaibigan niya sa ibang mga teammates niya, kaya siya nagpatuloy. SDG 3, Health and Well-Being. Isa pang balita dito nakalagay, isang bagong building ang ipinatayo sa isang napakalaking university dito sa Manila. SDG 4, Quality Education. Bakit kailangan natin na tignan itong mga ito? Dahil lahat tayo at lahat ang pangyayari sa ating mundo at sinasaad naman dito sa daily newspaper ay naapektuhan tayo. And these are all no, manifestations that the SDG goals are important to our daily lives. 
araw-araw, makikita mo at sa pagising mo pa lang sa umaga, pagpasok mo pa lang sa paaralan, when you started to wake up and get up in the morning, you will say to yourself, SDG 2, kakain ako ng almusal. SDG 2, zero hunger dapat ako today. Tama ba? Yes, tumatangwa ang madami. No? At kung papasok ka sa eskwelahan, at lahat ng pangarap nating nandito, mga mag-aaral ni Inang Pamantasan, we want to be, we want to be agents of good and quality education. Tama ba? Yes, SDG 4. Gayon din, marami sa atin, ano, ang nagbibigay ng napakaraming mga advokasiya at mga bagay na ginagawa para makatulong no at makamit ang mga SDGs na ito. Yan. So ngayon, bakit kailangan pagbigyan natin ng tuon yung goal number 17 o tinatawag natin na partnership for the goals? This goal, no, manifests that every country should give its effort to strengthen the means of implementation and revitalize the global partnership for sustainable development. No, and we want, no, uh, itong SDGs natin hindi ito basta inisip lang ng ilang mga eksperto at uh, sinabing sige, magkaroon tayo ng mga goals na ganito. In fact, nanggaling pa ito sa Millennium Development Goals noon at Medyo kinulang, kaya ngayon ay dinagdagan no? at ginawang 17 goals. So, partnership. Bakit? Ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng partnership? No? When we say partnership, we mean cooperation. We mean collaboration. We mean connection. All of this is actually talks about relationships. Tanong mo sa katabi mo, kamusta ang relationship mo with your family? Ayan, yung iba sa inyo, kinikilig. <laughs> with your family, with your teachers, with all of the people around, no? It talks about how we move forward with our lives having these relationships. Relationships should make us all. Anong ibig ko sabihin? Healthy relationship, partnership in that sense, should help you achieve your goal. So kung, ayan no, kung that person, if that person is not helping you achieve your goal, X na, red flag, sabi nila, no? But we're not, we're not gonna talk about that. We're talking about partnership of countries. No? Partnership for the goals. Sige, ito yung mga different flags that represents the different countries of the world. Sino kaya ang makakakita ng flag ng Pilipinas? Oh. Sabi, ayun no, ayun no, alin siyan. O dahil nakita nyo, mamaya meron kayong attendance sheet. <laughs> Alright. So, ang dami-daming countries sa mundo. At ang lahat ng ito ay pinag-uusapan kung paano makakatulong sa isa't isa, no, lalong-lalo na nung panahon ng pandemic. Naalala nyo? Ang suliranin ng isang bansa no, ay nakaapekto sa napakaraming bansa. Kaya itong mga bansang ito ay nagtulong-tulong. They partnered together. They collaborated together so that the pandemic will stop. And now, we are nearing the end of it. In fact, sinabi na, it was announced that the pandemic has ended. And we had to thank all these countries who worked forward to achieve the goals. No? And so these are countries. Why? If you look at this uh, paradigm, no, the 2030 Agenda of the United Nations, no, it is based on interconnected economy, society, and environment. As you can see there, no, the first four at the base, first four SDGs, such as SDG 15, Life on Land, 
SDG 14, Life Below Water, SDG 6, and SDG 13, Clean Air, and uh, Climate Change. We look at all of this as giving us, as to what gives us a healthy environment. This talks about our physical environment. And then, another four SDGs, such as the SDG 7, SDG 1, SDG 11, Sustainable Cities, um, SDG 4, SDG 3, SDG 5, and SDG 2. These are goals so that our societies will thrive. No? These are goals so that we can thrive within our societies. And then SDG 8, 9, 10, and 12 talks about how we can attain a prosperous economy. And all of those, in all of those SDGs, napakahalaga, no? very important. It's a very important thing that all countries should partner for these goals. And so, bakit siya nasa dulo? Bakit siya SDG 17? That's because it's an important thing to do. For all of these countries to achieve all the goals, partnership is essential. And so partnership right now is given an attention and focus so that all of these SDGs can be attained. Now you would ask, how would the Philippines partner with another country in terms of quality education? We have a lot of projects partnering with different agencies, with different countries, so that we can have a good quality education. In fact, some of you may have been recipients of scholarships from different countries, right? Sino dito yung scholar ng Finland? Well, Finland. <laughs> scholar ng different countries of the world, no? different countries. They give us free scholarship. What else? Some of you may have attended different activities online no? that helps us become good teachers as well. Partnership for the goals. And if not yet, if you have not yet done this, you can always, always go to the UNESCO APCU G said online campus and learn something about the SDGs and education for sustainable development. I also would like to focus on thriving societies. Sa Pilipinas, we have partnerships so that we can have thriving societies. Ang daming mga examples kung paanong ang isang komunidad ay mapaunlad. Remember, GK. Baseko GK, nakapunta na ba kayo doon? Ang mga ito, when I was in college, back in the days, now nasasabi ko, back in the days, back in the 90s, kauumpisa lang ng Habitat for Humanity. And every Saturday afternoon, I would go there and volunteer myself. No? Nagpapala ng semento so that these people without home can have a decent home to live in. And I know many of you are doing that as well. Okay? Then, of course, very important projects such as the SECRA uh, for the environment, uh, for the clean air, and, of course, for our oceans. At this point, 2023, we are now at the midpoint. Nasa kalagitnaan na tayo ng... SDG goals. So, ang tanong, are we getting there? Are we achieving our goals? Are we on target? Ang masasabi natin ngayon, malayo na, pero malayo pa. Malayo na, pero malayo pa. Bakit? Bakit natin nasasabi na, ay, malayo na, pero malayo pa rin eh. Marami pa rin mga problema. As you can see here, in the index of the SDGs, in the rankings of the SDGs, of course, the performance of Finland in achieving the SDGs is very high. 
Look at their scores. So, nasan yung Pilipinas? And these are the first six countries who achieved and have a high performance in achieving the SDGs. Wag mong isipin na sana nasa Finland ka na lang. Kasi naiisip ko na yung naiisip nyo. No? Sana nasa Finland na lang ako. Nilagay ka dito sa bansang ito kasi may purpose ka. Tignan mo yung kasitmate mo. Sabihin mo, may purpose ka dito. Yan. Anong purpose mo? Bakit ka nandito? Si Sweden, Denmark, Germany, Austria, France. I was so blessed that the university sent me in Germany in August. And I saw what great opportunities they have for their citizens to practice the SDGs. They don't have air conditions in their home. Why? Because they said, and it is a mandate from the government, that it causes a lot of damage to the environment. And so they have this solar panels to generate energy for their homes. Nakakahanga. At ang nasabi ko lang, sana, all. Diba? Nasa ng Pilipinas? Nandito tayo. At least, pasok tayo sa 100. Okay? So we are number 98. Uh, so sana naman, mapataas natin to. Sabi ko nga, Malayo pa, pero malayo na rin ang nagagawa natin. Sana sa susunod, nasa first 50 na tayo o first 10. Hindi naman masamang mangarap, di ba? Di ba? We can always, always dream of that time where we can also do something for our country to achieve these goals. Hindi ko na isa isen yung mga countries dito kasi baka umabot tayo ng 4 hours at... Uh, Hindi naman yun yung ating uh, focus sa ngayon. Alright? So, midpoint 2023, the United Nations actually sent out a report at kasama yung ipinakita ko kanina. It was included in this report of the United Nations, the Sustainable Development Goals Report 2023 Special Edition, so that it can be towards a rescue plan for the people and planet. As you can see here in the infograph from this book, from this report, that many developing countries such as ours are still facing a debt crisis. You can see there that the debt crisis actually had an increase after the pandemic. Ibig sabihin, humaharap pa rin tayo sa maraming problema hanggang sa ngayon. I look at the, sh uh, the share of experts from LDCs or low-developing countries in local merchandise trades has been stagnant. Reason for us to be hopeless. But also, Reason for us to be more hopeful, right? Reason for us to be more hopeful of our future. Para masabi mo sarili mo, ay may kaya akong gawen. Kaya ko paring tumulong. Ito ay problema ng mga bansa. Pero paano ka makakatulong? Paano tayo makakatulong para maibsan natin yung suliranin na meron tayo? sa ating bansa. Sabi nga natin kanina, binanggit ko, partnership. Mga anak ni Inang Pamantasan, kayo ay partners. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, partner! Ayan. <laughs> partners tayo. We are partners for development. And so we need to cooperate. We need to collaborate. We need to connect with each other and forge 
healthy relationships and helpful relationships for our goals. Yan. Sino dito ang nakaka-relate sa word na sinabi ko? Can you relate in this Tagalog word or in this Filipino word? Too long. Too long. Ito ang madalas nating sinasabi kapag hindi na natin kaya. Tama? Pwede bang sa partnership humingi ng tulong? Ang lakas, no? Parang may gustong humingi ng tulong mamaya. Tulong! Napakahalaga. Alam nyo, nung nag-aaral ako ng college katulad nyo, tuwing Sabado, nagtitinda ako. At lagi ko sinasabi sa mga dumadaan na tricycle driver, Manong, tulungan nyo na akong matapos at maubos tong merienda. Kasi kapag ka hindi, I cannot go to school. Wala akong babaunin sa susunod na linggo. True enough, nakatapos ako. At pagkatapos nun, daladala ko ang aking medalya, lumalakad ako sa kanto namin. Ang sabi ng mga tricycle drivers na ito, scholar namin yan. Eh, di ba? Grabe, no? Hindi mo alam na kahit sa maliit na pagkakataon at paraan, maaari kang makatulong at makapagbabago ng isang buhay. Pero, marami tayong natutulungan, tayo mismo tinutulungan. Ikaw ba? Meron ka na bang tinulungan? Wow, ang lakas ng yes! Meron ka bang naitulong? Meron din kasing walang naitutulong. Yes. Pero, gusto kong baguhin natin ang pananaw natin sa salitang pinagtulungan. Often times, sa ating mga Pilipino, lalo na dito sa Metro Manila, pag sinabing pinagtulungan, ang negative ng dating. Tama? Ay, pinagtulungan yan eh. ba? Diba? Pero gusto natin sa partnership, sabi, ay, binugbog, pinagtulungan. Hindi yon, it is, no? Pinagtulungan. Pag sinabi nating pinagtulungan, nag-aambag tayo, pinagtutulungan-tulungan natin para maging matagumpay. Sa isang project, no? Naalala ko, ay, pinagtulungan. Hinayaang mag-isa. Hindi yon ang ibig sabihin ng pinagtutulungan. No? Binabago natin ang pananaw natin sa pinagtutulungan dahil lahat tayo, tayong lahat dito, bawat isa, ay may pwedeng gawin para mapagtulungan natin ito. Okay? At ang pagtutulungan na ito, sa Filipino language natin, we call it bayanihan. No? Napakagandang salita. No? Sa kultura natin na meron tayo nito at nagpapakita ng napakahalagang katangian bilang mga Pilipino na kaya nating magbayanihan. Ano ba yung bayanihan? Ang bayanihan ay may pinagtutulungan. No? Sabi nga doon sa mga kanta, huwag kang magtaka kung may nakakita kang isang bahay na lumalakad. Very old song. Pero ngayon, huwag kang magtaka kung sa komunidad, sama-sama para malutas ang problema. Yun yung tinatawag natin na bayanihan. Gusto natin, nagbabayanihan tayo para sa kabutihang panlahat. No? Together, Partners for the common good. Bakit kailangan sabihin ko ito? Bakit kailangan isama ko ito sa ating talakayan ngayong hapon? Minsan kasi, nagtutulungan ang bawat isa, ngunit hindi para sa kabutihang panlahat. We want to partner, be partners for the common good. At pag sinabi mong common good, iniisip mo kung anong magiging epekto ng ginagawa mo sa ibang tao. Sana pare-pareho tayo ng pangarap para sa ating bansa. And that, I think, is the best bayanihan for common good. For us, all of, for all of us here, mga anak ni Inang Pamantasan, 
we all dream of a good and quality education for the Philippines. Para saan? Para sa kabutihan pa lahat. Para sa kabutihan natin. Para sa bayang Pilipinas. And so, ang tanong ko ngayon, kung napag-usapan na natin yung pagtutulungan, napag-usapan na natin yung pagbabayanihan, napag-usapan natin ang kabutihan pa lahat, common good, anong ambag mo para sa SDGs? Ito, nakaupo ako, inaaral ko ngayon. That's very good. Right? Perhaps you can ask yourself, how can I help? How can I help? How can we help? Alright, but first, we have to understand how we can help and what kind of education should we have for SDGs. And so, I give you this framework about understanding global citizenship and sustainable development. Of course, global citizenship, the Philippine Normal University is the National Center for Global Citizenship Education. We have a GSED Center in the Philippines, and the GSED Center has different networks in the different regions. And so we push forward for global citizenship education. And what's that something to do with the common good? Of course, global citizenship education is about educating people for a common understanding of what it means to be belonging to a broader community. Beyond national boundaries that emphasizes that we belong to a common humanity. And draws on that common humanity, we draw on the interconnectedness of Filipinos with other Filipinos in the world. Local and global. It is local. Even if we are physically different from other um, citizens of other nations, we are part of the common humanity. Even if we are different from our counterparts in Mindanao, we are the same human. We belong to the same humanity. And so, we base this kind of education on the universal values of respect for each other, of human rights, of democracy, of non-discrimination and appreciation to diversity. So where should our civic action lie in global citizenship education? We we'll look at what can we do for our country as it translates towards the betterment of our humanity. And so what is G said and has it something to do with education for sustainable development? And so we are now looking at the big picture. We are looking at the world as our planet. We are looking at the world as our home. And so we push forward for sustainable development education. But what is sustainable development? Of course, development that meets the need of the present without compromising the ability to give to the future generation and to meet their own needs. When I was college in 1991 up to 1994, we have been talking about this already. The sustainable development. Sa Tagalog, sa Filipino, likas kayang pag-unlad. How can we develop ourselves? How can we use our resources? But without sacrificing what we have now, for our future generations. And I was blessed enough to see the future generation right now because I am with you. Exactly on that same spot that where you are, I was listening to my professors talking about sustainable development. Sustainable development is about balancing our demands right now but looking at our future as well. 
in terms of our environment, in terms of our economy, and in terms of our society. Look at the core concept dimension of global citizenship education. Of course, as educators, we cannot forego the cognitive, the social-emotional, and the behavioral aspect of our development, the development of the learner. Of course, cognitively speaking, we want you, students, we want everybody who can learn to acquire the knowledge, understanding, and critical thinking about global, regional, national, local, and community issues and about their interconnectedness and interdependency among them. Meaning that if we have a problem in our community, nonetheless, it will affect other societies as well. Social-emotional aspect or dimension of global citizenship education talks about our sentiments to feel that we belong to a common humanity, to share the values of respect and our responsibility in this world. To talk about empathy, to have empathy and solidarity and appreciation for diversity. Would you imagine a world full of look-alikes? Look at your seatmate. Do you want her or him to be just like you? Or you yourself to be just like her? Look at your thumb, guys. Look at your thumb. Your thumb is one of the identities of yourself. Ikaw lang merong ganyang thumb. No? Sabi niya ay sayang. <laughs> Ikaw lang meron. Because we are all different, diverse. But exactly, that's how exciting the world is, right? That's how exciting the world is when we are so diverse, but we can still learn and appreciate each other. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, you are somebody special. Somebody special, de ba? Or like na agad yan. Now, we also have behavioral, behavioral aspect or dimension. Behavioral aspect or dimension of global citizenship education talks about how we can act effectively and responsibly at local, national, and global levels for a more peaceful and sustainable world. This talk about how we can partner towards the SDGs. This is where the action begins. But you cannot act without understanding, without critical thinking, without that sentiment of respect, not just for each other in our common humanity, but also respect to our Mother Earth. How about education for sustainable development? Education for sustainable development has four dimensions. It's all about social transformation. Looking at empowering learners from different age levels in any educational setting to transform themselves and the society they live in. Do you know our philosophy at the Philippine Normal University? Our philosophy at the Philippine Normal University is all about education for personal renewal and social transformation. Now we can say that this is very ESD, right? And all graduates of the Philippine Normal University is expected to be educators pushing forward for education, for personal renewal and social transformation. And so what we are doing right now is part of transformative education that enables citizens to see, yes, that there are problems, but there can be changes. It is also an education that enables transition of greener economies, a greener Philippines, a greener campus. In fact, Right at this very time, 
our university is also joining the ranking of green education. We have campuses from the different parts of the Philippines, and we have a campus in Cadiz that has integrated education for green technology. We equip learners so that we can have green jobs as well. What's green jobs? Something that is sustainable. Equipping us to adopt a more sustainable lifestyle. One of the activities that students can have is look at the problems and see solutions. One problem we can see is that there are so many plastics. We feel guilty whenever we accept that we accept that order from the rider. <laughs> no? Plastic pa more. May picture pa. And so where do we put all those plastics? That's a kind of problem for all of us. And so if we can have, if we can think about more greener, no? yung greener uh, job rather than putting it all in plastic, then maybe that's part of what we can do as educators. Of course, the, the learning content talks about climate change, biodiversity, disaster risk reduction, and sustainable consumption and production, which is part, of course, of the 17 SDGs. And what are the pedagogies and learning environment? We look at action-oriented, transformative learning, one that is immersed in the community. And so, NSTP. And thank you for being part of this afternoon's learning series so that we'll know more about how we can be individuals who can think of actions which can help our communities. Shout out to mga NSTP students. <laughs> education 4.0, quality education, sustainable development goal number four, to empower learners of all ages to become more proactive contributors to a more just, peaceful, tolerant, inclusive, and sustainable world. We look forward in 2030 that we can have a just society, that we can have a more sustainable world, that we become more tolerant of each other, we become more inclusive in education, and we become citizens of the world. And so, paano, mamawi, paano gagawin yan? Now, I want to suggest the four A's because I'm, uh, my nickname is Awi. So, para mas madali niyong matandaan so that you can easily remember the four A's for SDGs. Ready na ba kayo? Ayan. Number one, we should foster attitudes and values relevant to addressing global challenges. It must be characterized by us. What are these attitudes and values? Sinabi ko kanina, we teach transformative education here. And so when you are transformative, you look at the values of respect. Someone who promotes and value peace, appreciation of diversity, valuing diversity, and sustaining sustainable consumption. Are you sustainable in consuming products as well? Are we tolerant of each other? Are we critical? Do we have critical thinking in looking at the different um, activities? And so the knowledge and the skills, the attitudes and values are important for us. We have to characterize these attitudes and values. So what are these? In G said, in the 21st century skills, we look at collaboration, the four C's of 21st century learning. We look at critical thinking. We look at the creativity of solving problems. And we look at communication. How do we put forth all these four C's in order for us to be helpful in attaining the goals? And then, of course, I also would like 
to give another four C's related to the four C's of the 21st century skills. When you want to communicate, you have to connect. Paulo Freire has said, a true dialogue is a connecting and respecting dialogue. You deeply connect to yourself and to others as well as you have respect to each other. And then, for collaboration, you have to contribute. When you collaborate, you need to contribute. There should be a contribution. There should be something, however small, that you will do to make a difference. In critical thinking, when you are critical, when you're thinking critically, you choose what is best. Not just based on your own feelings, but you choose, you also choose the values that are inclusive, no, towards kindness, and towards transformative societies. And of course, using your creativity, you can create the life that you want. Creativity needs in creation. Remember the Bloom's Taxonomy of Objectives? The highest form of learning is when you create something. And so we create the future that we want. We create the life that we love. And love the life that you have. Do you love the life that you have right now? If not, you can still have Use your creativity and create something new. Number two of the four A's, and we are actually wrapping up. Number two is to analyze. Analyze and observe. Tagalog, magmasid. No? Look at the problem. Look at the causes and effects. Analyze the problems. Sometimes, because we are feeling overwhelmed, we tend to look at the problems and become overwhelmed. And so sabi mo, ayoko na. Nagwaling ka na, ayoko na. But if we look at the problem and analyze it properly using critical thinking, we can see, no? we can observe that there are solutions to these problems. Bakit? Sa totoo lang, sa pagmamasid natin sa ating komunidad, walang komunidad na walang problema. Agree kayo? Ko agree kayo, thumbs up? Ganon din sa mga online viewers natin. If you agree, please send us a thumbs up. Right? Because walang komunidad na walang problema. Lahat ng komunidad, lahat ng tao, may problema naman. Pero, may solusyon ang bawat problema. No? Ito, ang dami nating problema, no? word cloud of problems in our communities. Pero, pwede tayo, and that is the third A, pwede tayong kumilos. We can take action. How do we take action? Paano tayo kikilos? We can engage ourselves. Paano? Volunteer. How do you volunteer? Diba? You can volunteer as a student. If you're a teacher right now and looking for volunteer opportunities, please come to Philippine Normal University and we can give you areas of how you can volunteer. Families can volunteer. Of course, the school principals and all the community members can volunteer towards a better community. And so, now, I give you some examples of creative community engagements that we have done with my students and with the NSTP program. This one was done in 2017 when all of these teachers of values education, values education major, but 2019 went in a community here in Manila sa mga batang bakwit noon ng Marawi at nagturo, gumawa sila ng mga aklat, they made big books that talks about peace and love. And we call that program 
Read for Peace Project or RPP. These children are from Marawi. Mga bakwit na bata na nagpunta dito sa Maynila, nakakita at nakaranas ng isang magulong komunidad. Itong mga mag-aaral na to ng Philippine Normal University volunteered to come into the school and provide support to these children. Kaya mo rin to. These are some of the printed instructional materials that students in NSTP have produced before the pandemic. Mga hamon sa panahon, mga kwento ng kabataan sa Katmon, sa Katmon, Valenzuela ata ito, no? mga hamon sa mga kabataan. And so they went into their own projects of looking at the lives of out-of-school youth. They gathered this OSY and help them become more literate. Ito yung mga estudyante ng Philippine Normal University. Hindi lang nakaupo dito sa campus. Lumalabas at nagiging mga taong kumikilos para sa pagbabago. Kahit ang basura, tinawag nilang transformation. Care, act, and create. This is a project about um, looking at the garbage in Baklaran and creating an environment for the community where they can use this trash towards a more sustainable community. Of course, youth care is all about wellness, literacy, and then uh, crossing boundaries are projects of uh, students as well. Hindi naman tayo huminto bilang university. During the pandemic, we had active and responsible youth participation in the time of COVID. We used the online platform so that we can reach students to learn something during the pandemic. These are projects. Tinawag natin ang project na ito na Likhaksyon. Itong lahat ay tungkol sa SDG3, Health and Wellness. These are students' projects where students from different parts of the Philippines can download and use it. No? These are websites that our students from the Philippine Normal University graduate na rin sila, no? Batch 2021, 2022. No? That talks about how they can have projects that can help our young people in their health and well-being. Of course, I myself volunteers in our community. Tagamontinlupa ako. And I'm part of this initiative called Integrity Initiative. And I'm proud that even as a small pinch of my time, I still want to contribute to my own community as well. And so we step up. No? We have this office called Community Partnership and Extension Office to partner with you if you volunteer. This is a call for students and alumni and other community members as well to volunteer in our community projects. Lastly, the last of the four A's is to agonize. Bakit naman, Ma'am Awi, agonize? We have to be bothered by what we see. Remember the word um, unbothered? Unbothered is a very bothering state. When you are already comfortable of where you are right now, maybe we have a problem. We have to be agonizing about it. We have to be uncomfortable about it. We have to be bothered. So when you are bothered, you agonize with it. When I say agonize, while you are reflecting, masakit sa iyo na ganito ang nangyayari sa iyong kapaligiran. 
tuwing umaga na lang pagpapasok tayo. Every morning, when we come to school, we agonize about our situation. And so, magnilay tayo. Why? We need to reflect. We need to ask ourselves, what? What is my experience all about? Why am I experiencing this situation? And then ask again, after answering yourself about this question of what, so what? Eh, ano ngayon? Ano bang significance nito? Ano bang magiging um, sitwasyon ko dahil sa karanasang ito? And then, ask the third question, now what? The question of now what will tell you what you're going to do afterwards. Now what? Now what? Mga kapatid, mga anak ni Inang Pamantasan, mga kasama, mga kababayan, we determine the kind of future we want to build. Iniisip natin kung anong kinabukasan ang gusto natin. Tama? Agree? Yes. Now, I will ask again the question that I paused earlier. What kind of world would you like to see in 2030 and beyond? What kind of world would you like to be in in 2030 and beyond? Sipin mo yan, agonize about it, reflect about it, but also take ownership of your story of change. Bakit? Dahil tayo ang magsusulat ng kwento ng mga pagbabagong nais nating makamit para sa ating mundo. Sa lunes, magde-decision tayo. Tayo ang magsusulat ng mga kwento ng mga pagbabagong nais nating makamit para sa ating komunidad, para sa ating bansa at para sa ating mundo. Handa ka na ba? Handa ka na ba? Take action after agonizing the question that is posed to us right now. Are you ready for your future? Are you future ready? Or are you ready to take action? To make a change? Why? Guys, mga kasama, mga kababayan, we are all mad here. Mad for me means making a difference. We are all mad here. Are you mad? Tanungin ang katabi, are you mad today? <laughs> making a difference. We are all mad here. We are all making a difference. So we have to stop. If we want to make a difference, we have to stop. Asking, what's in it for me? Instead of asking what this life can offer you, why do you... It won't hurt if you ask, what can I offer life? Diba? So you have to stop all of this. Ano yung witism? What's in it for me? Lagi na lang, what's in it for me? Ay, pumunta ako doon kasi... Dot, dot, dot. Or, ay, may acne. Alam ko na yan. Alam ko na yan. Very acne, right? Or smart shaming. Kayo na lang kasi matalino naman kayo. Ang galing nyo naman. So, kayo na lang dyan. Or, worst, apathy. Apathy, walang paki. <laughs> Ayaw natin noon. No? Itigil natin yan. At itigil natin yung pagsasabing, kaya na nila yan. Kaya nyo na yan. Because, Sabi ni Margaret Mead, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever does. Never doubt what you can do as an individual, what you can do as a group. If you are thoughtful, committed citizens, you can, we can change the world. Right? We can change the world. So, do you have the heart to be mad? Can you make a difference? 
if you have the heart to be mad, right? For this child and all the children of this globe and for your future self. Make actions that your future self can be proud of right now. So, let us build a more just, peaceful, tolerant, inclusive, and sustainable societies together. Why? Because according to the Secretary General of the United Nations, unless we act now, the 2030 Agenda will become an epitaph for a world that might have been. This is Awi Hibanada, dahil sa PNU Talks, ang pagkatuto ay hindi nakakalimutan at pagkatuto ay magpapatuloy. Maraming salamat po at magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. My question and answer. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Ibanada. So again, let's clap to Dr. Rowena Ibanada.